how much of sql is needed for you to crack a data science interview how much sql is needed for you on a day to day basis if you are working in a data science role these kind of queries keep coming to me through comments and in my youtube live as well in this video i'll talk about three topics mainly i'll talk about what is sql so if some of you is not aware of this what is sql then i will talk about some of my experiences and tell you how sql help you in your data science journey how sql is important for your data science interview which all places sql will be a savior for you i'll talk about those things here in why part and then i will discuss about if you want to learn sql from let's say zero to an intermediate level how to go about it if you want to learn sql from an intermediate to expert level then how to go about it right welcome to unfold data science my name is aman and i am a data scientist let's start so what is sql so most of you would be aware of this sql is nothing but a structured query language okay so it stands for structured query language so this is a language basically now what is the use of any language the use of any language in the world of computer is to communicate with the system right so java python c++ what you do you communicate with the computers using this also you communicate but for a different purpose what purpose let us say you run a uh, chain of restaurants in bangalore i'm just giving an example you run chain of restaurants in bangalore now you are getting data from all your restaurants you want to store the data you cannot store your data in an excel sheet forever right you want to store your data in some form of tables so you will use something known as a rdbms system okay rdbms system rdbms stands for relational database management system so why it is called relational database management system is tables or your data is stored in form of some relations what is the meaning of relations so you will have one table called store you will have another table called products you will have third table called sales and then in the sales table you will have various stores information also various items information also so some kind of relation right that kind of arrangement is called rdbms system of storing data okay sql is a language using which you can store and retrieve the data from rdbms system that is what is sql at high level now if you come one level down then sql can be typically divided into three segments or three bucket okay one is called data definition language another is called data manipulation language and third is called transaction control language or data control language okay the important thing to understand here is i will first talk about what is data definition language so in sql there are various commands or various queries that you use for example if you want to create a table in sql you use a command called create if you want to drop a table in sql you want you you use a command called drop drop all those commands using which you create drop or alter your data in database alter your tables in database come under the bucket of ddl so i'm talking about insert i'm talking about alter and i'm talking about drop okay pardon me for my bad handwriting here okay what is data manipulation language so data manipulation language is all the commands in sql using which you interact with the data or you manipulate the data inside the table what are those commands so i will write some of the commands here so for inserting the data in the table you use insert for updating the data in the table you use update right for selecting or viewing the data in the table you use something known as select right these kind of statements come under the category of dml what is tcl tcl is known as transaction control language which means if i have a database then i do not want to give all the access to all the users so you might be one user of my database but i do not want you to be able to drop any table so i don't give you that access okay so any command that help in access control kind of thing is known as transaction control what kind of commands some of the basic commands are grant grant for granting access revoke revoke for revoking access right so these three buckets now why i'm explaining you all this is the important thing to understand here is as a data scientist 95% of the time we do not need to do transaction control we do not need to do 
data data definition okay what we should focus on and what we need is data manipulation language in simple terms data is stored somewhere as a data scientist we just view the data we just see how the data is and use that data we are the consumers we are not the creators or destroyers we are the consumers core data science i'm talking about if you if you include some bit of data engineering then maybe these will be come under your role bucket but not generally okay so what we should focus on is data manipulation language important things to do there viewing the data observing the data doing some analysis on the data now let's come to this part to give you some business context of why is sql very important for you so just my opinion sql is not important sql is very important for you okay let me give you some scenarios let us say you work on a freelance project you on board you are you know you give commitment to your client that you will work on a freelance project and client gives you access to their database once you have the access to the client database then only sql will help you to get a understanding of how the data is machine learning model training model building all those things will come later the first thing that you will need is go into that database and view the data for example how many customers are there for that particular business you go and run a select query select count star from customer table right how many transactions are there select count star from transactions table some high level understanding of the data what will help you here sql why is high level understanding needed because based on that only you will estimate many things right i'll tell you more about it in a moment so first is it will give you a high level understanding of your business or your data okay next is in any planning so when do you access a use case right when when you say a use case is complicated or a use case is simple for example if you are working on a data science project where there are only 1000 customers or 1000 cases if you are working on a data science project where there are 1 million cases or records to work with or customers to work with complexities will be different right so how do you access those complexities in the beginning of the project using this skill that is the importance next is many a times it is not machine learning model that solves the business problem let me give you one example okay let us say you are working on a just an example i am giving you are working on a anomaly detection use case okay so you have certain transactions in front of you your job is to detect the anomaly transactions now all of you know that anomaly transaction can be detected using uh, sigma plus, uh, mu plus minus 3 sigma that is standard deviation method right now mu plus minus 3 sigma can be a way of defining your, or detecting your anomalies right now this thing can be put into a sql query itself no need of going into any fancy machine learning algorithm any statistical calculations if you want you can write this logic in sql query and your entire use case will be solved using a simple sql script that is the power of sql here what next the next is all these i am talking from my experience guys what next the next is many a times uh, when you talk to business for example you start a new project and you talk to business that uh do you have the social media data of the customer business will tell you uh we have the data can you go on these tables and check if you are fast in sql at least some intermediate level you will quickly go and analyze those tables which the customer is pointing to and then you can make a statement saying you know what data quality in those tables are not good so if you go and see that 80% of the values are blank or null and they are capturing the value but 80% of the values are null then what is the use of that table right so if your business says that we have all the data but the model is not doing good you can tell that we have data but the quality of let's say 20 30% of the data is poor how you can make that statement by using sql okay so this is the power of sql and last but not the least if you go for a data science interview you must be prepared for questions on sql if i am taking interview i'll definitely ask you okay so interview now having understood what is sql and some of the use cases of sql how to learn sql many ways basically two ways i will tell you first is let us say you are starting as a beginner from zero 
so there are many online compilers i will put the link in the description there are many online places where they will give you some sample tables to practice you can go and practice your queries and you can improve on that okay so first is online learning so you no need to install anything you can go and practice the things on your own this is for the people who are starting from zero and want to you know reach to an intermediate level but what i will advise you is spend some on a total spend some 20 30 hours of your time okay and try to install some sql server on your machine very easy to install is mysql okay so mysql is a, a platform using which you can practice it's free also you can download and install if you install on the platform then there will be many advantages first of all you will learn how to install and how to do things second is when you write query on your tables on the query window then you will be more confident third is tomorrow you want to connect python to sql right or mysql so on online platforms you might not be able to do if you have in your system you can connect that two ways mainly how i can help you here is if you want i can create a video on how to install mysql how to do basic operations how to connect to python those things i can take a video on that apart from that if you have any doubts on this topic entire topic write me in comment and i hope i was able to give you some knowledge from this video if yes give me a thumbs up i'll see you all in the next video till then all of you stay safe and take care